have open on screen before me a photo I took at the Hard Rock Cafe in Orlando and in this project we're going to select Elvis Presley's pink Cadillac and turn it into a blue Cadillac and we'll do that with the quick selection tool. So come over to the toolbox and click on this tool which is the lower right icon in the selection group and notice if we right click the icon we get the choice of two tools one of which is the quick selection tool and the other is the selection brush. We'll be taking a quick look at the selection brush in this video but for now go ahead and select the quick selection tool and we'll get something that looks like a brush appear on screen. Now zoom into the car so we can get a good view of our subject and if I click and drag just a little bit towards the back of the car we'll create a selection outline that jumps to the edges of the pink colored car. So what's happened is that as soon as we click the tool is going to work out what's similar around it in way of color and select as much of it as it possibly can. We have all of our familiar brush options available from the options bar so the new add and subtract from selection options we discussed in the previous tutorial the brush size and brush hardness options the sample all layers option which decides if we're selecting from all the layers in the composition if it's on or just the active layer if it's off. The next option is this auto enhance one which if it's on will retrace the selection edges and use smoothing and a more accurate algorithm to make sure the edges are as accurate as possible. I'll recommend leaving this option on unless you're getting problems with crashes and general slowness when using this particular tool because even though it's more accurate in what it does, it does require more processing power to get its results. So make sure it's on, and then the final option is the refine edge command that we'll be looking at later on in this chapter. Okay, so I want you to carry on selecting the car by just clicking, and where necessary dragging over the car in small drags, because if you start dragging too much, by the way, you're going to be selecting all kinds of stuff that you don't really want. It's going to start jumping all over the place. We can also use the Alt or Option dragging trick that we picked up in the previous exercise in order to deselect areas where we may have selected too much. I'm going to zoom into the front of the car and now we'll reduce the size of the brush and try to select these isolated areas, but if you do, Remember, we'll need to use the shift key in order to add to the selection afterwards, and then we can try our best to select these areas. And it's a very common way of working, by the way, when you're doing this type of work, to change the brush size very regularly, and even zoom in and zoom out almost constantly whilst working. That's the real benefit of having those keyboard shortcuts in the forefront of your mind. It's just going to make this work as pain-free as it possibly can be. Okay, I'll drag the image over a little and reposition it. Now, as you can see, some of these selection outlines are not in the best of shape. So we may need to add some additional work with subtracting areas and maybe adding other areas in as well, looking at it. So I'll just do a little bit of fix up work. And while I'm doing that, let me tell you about a couple of things. Firstly, the tools train itself on the color values. So as you add and subtract, the process should become easier and more efficient the more you do it inside the same image. Secondly, as you're bearing witness to right now, the quick selection tool is anything but quick, if you want to get some half decent results from it anyway. You're going to find yourself adding and subtracting areas quite a bit until you arrive at what you want. The more basic the colors you're trying to select, the quicker it's going to be. But when you're trying to select colors in this kind of transitional range around the outside of this car, it's going to take a little bit more patience to get to what you want the selection outline to look like. Finally, don't expect miracles. We're working with a highly automated tool, as I just said, and therefore we have to rely on elements to do the majority of work for us. Sometimes it's going to get it right, and other times it's not. You're just going to have to take the rough with the smooth most of the time, and don't forget that we've always got that refine edge command available to refine the selection outline once we've done with the particular selection tool that we're working on. 
regardless of what the selection tool is. The details of that, of course, are coming up soon. I think I'm happy with what we've done so far, so I'll just readjust the zoom ratio to get the best view of the image. And you know what? We've missed this tiny detail at the top of the windscreen. And we need to make sure that we've got that in, otherwise it's going to remain pink when we change the colour of the car to blue. And that's just going to look a little bit unrealistic, I guess. Now, just so as you get a glimpse of the other tool we referred to at the beginning of this tutorial, the selection brush, I'm going to come over to the toolbox and switch to it. And I could also use the keyboard shortcut of A to switch between these two tools. Okay, now you're not going to see a big difference with how this tool looks on screen, but one option though I want you to make sure is set up, and that's the mode being set to selection. Once we're assured ourselves of that, zoom into the paintwork at the top of the windscreen. We'll be wanting the best vantage point, so we need to zoom in as much as we possibly can, basically. And then make sure we have the brush size set to something like I have it set here. And also that the mode at the left of the options bar is set to add rather than select. And now we can just drag away inside this little area. And this time the area we drag in is converted to a selection outline. There's nothing else going on like we had with the quick selection tool. No special tricks or anything like that. Just painting a selection as you see in front of you. Once we're done, zoom out to take in the whole image. And now let's add the color adjustment. Before we do, Let's explore our options. We could just come up here to the Enhance menu and then choose Adjust Color and then choose the Adjust Hue Saturation command like we have before. The thing with doing that is that we're going to be permanently changing the color of the pixels in the image, meaning that if we wanted to do some additional work in the future, it would be very difficult to do. The other way we could work is to duplicate the layer and we've seen that method before as well, so we could work on a copied version of the layer with the original untouched underneath. That's going to keep our original pixels safe and intact, but it will also double the size of the file. And when we're saving to large formats like PSD, as we have to with layers featuring in our composition here, we want to avoid that if we can. We don't want to be doubling the size of the file unless there's absolutely no alternative. The best way of working in this scenario is to employ an adjustment layer to hold the color adjustment, in this case a hue saturation adjustment, and a mask which will hold the selection information, and I'll show you how both of those work in the very next video.